I, I graduated after I got back from the service. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. It was on a Sunday afternoon, and uh, oh, I, I guess I was probably about 14, 15 years old, and we heard it over the radio. And there, we had an old. Uh, a, a big radio sitting in the corner of the room, and uh, they m mentioned that that had happened. I enlisted in. Uh, I had a friend. I had a friend that was. He was. He had signed up to go in the navy, and uh, he didn't want to go alone, and so he he wanted me to go, and uh, so I uh, went to my my parents and uh, of course they didn't want to sign me up and and finally my mother my mother she kind of relented and then my dad signed signed the papers and so then I went in the navy and <laughs> this was in 19 what what year was that 44 44 yeah I went to Sa Sampton Navy base okay yeah and then uh, out of boot camp, we went up to uh, Newport, Rhode Island, and that's where I was. Uh, got on the ship that was uh, I was on the USS St. Paul. St. Paul was a Baltimore class cruiser. Yes, it was, and was the second ship of the United. In case you're interested. Okay, second ship of the United States Navy to be named for St. Paul, Minnesota. What had happened, you know, German submarines were out there and they, they uh, uh, shot down a lot of uh, ships and, and a lot of, they lost a lot of men. And so they needed replacements and uh, I got up before the officer there, and he says, you have the choice of either a, a, a hospital ship or a, a ammunition ship. He says, which do you want? And I said, I'll take the hospital ship. Well, a couple of days went by, and my name appeared on a roster for replacements on the USS St. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got on the welcome, heavy cruiser. Welcome to the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, they ask and you do just that, they do just the opposite. I was a radar operator for 40 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. We had a shakedown cruise down to Tr Trinidad. And uh, that was quite a thing. We went through Cape Hatteras in a storm. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and we refueled, we refueled uh, with a, a oil tanker off the uh, uh, off the coast there, and uh, it was it during the stormy weather, and uh, uh, we had uh, they had lines that they brought the fuel aboard, and uh, the sh the ships went out like this and tightened up the fuel line and. Fuel line broke, and we had fuel oil, fuel oil all over the entire ship. And the next few sunny days that we had, we everybody had to go out and clean the fuel oil off the oh my gosh the ship. <laughs> and, uh, the cruiser Pittsburgh, cruiser Pittsburgh was the same class cruiser that we were. And uh, they had gone through a typhoon uh, uh, out in the Pacific, and in the t during the t storm, their bow had got torn off. I don't know if you remember that. Hmm. The, the bow of the ship uh, got torn off in the typhoon, so they had to tow tow the ship and everything. Uh, into the west coast and for repairs and so 
when we got to Pearl Harbor, being that we were the same class ship, they took us and two other just uh, ships and uh, tied us up together, and they went in and they strengthened all the bows of the, our ships uh, so that wouldn't happen to the, our ship. So we were in Pearl Harbor for two months. My oh, gosh. Yeah, every other day you had liberty, so we'd, we'd of course, we'd go, go, go ashore and... <laughs> Every once in a while, a ship would have a, a beer party. Mm -hmm. and they'd uh, stop someplace, and uh, they'd all the guys would go ashore, and uh, they had all the beer and stuff you could you could use at that time. We went up and we got in on the uh, strikes on Japan. Uh, and we had two bombardments on the islands of Japan. And also strikes on Kure, Kobe, and uh, again, Hanchu. We had, we had four spotter planes. The, the, the planes that we had, they were pontoon planes, but they didn't have any armor on them. And what they were used for was uh, when they fired uh, the main battery of the of the ship, it was just eight inch eight inch uh, shots. They uh, they flew uh, out over the the target area to let them know whether to raise the guns or lower the guns or how far from the target you are. And so, uh, but. Uh, when they fired a gun, that would go probably 20 miles, uh, the shot, you know. So they were, and then they'd land, and then the planes would land in the wake of the ship, and then they had a crane, and they they hooked onto the plane and uh, hoisted it aboard. Really? And they fired the sh planes off on a catapult. They had catapults that they fired the ships off. So he had a very short runway. <laughs> you fired the war's last hostile salvo from yeah. a major ship. Yeah, we, we were. What was the feeling? You know, here you are. This is August 9th, August 10th. Um, not every, The war had not ended yet, but did you have a sense that the war was winding down? Oh, I think so, yeah. It was kind of, I don't know, I guess he didn't think too much about it. My mother uh, was dying of cancer, and so when the war ended, right after the war ended, uh, my mother passed away. So it was kind of a sad time for me. As you come in the, as you come in the Tokyo Bay, there uh parts of the surrender treaty was all, uh, all gun emplacements that the Japanese had were to be have white flags uh, uh flying uh, uh on on each uh, gun emplacement and when we come into Tokyo Bay there's white flags all over the place they must have had guns all over, over in the hillsides and that. And uh, if I think if they would have, could have, they would have bombed bombed the U.S. fleet right out of the water there. They had, they had so much uh, gun emplacements and that. But that was one of the things of the treaty that they were supposed to. Honor, you know. Were you able to visualize the, the USS Missouri? Were you close enough for that? No, we were quite a ways from there. There was there was a lot of ships in the in the fleet in the Tokyo Bay, and we, you know, you we, we were just one of them. And let us pray that peace be now restored to the world, and that God will preserve it always. These proceedings are closed.
program to bring you a special news bulletin from CBS World News. President Roosevelt is dead. We remember when uh, President Roosevelt passed away. Mm -hmm. We were aboard ship then. That's one day that we remember when they, when he passed away. Uh, there was a general announcement to the, to the, uh, all the guys on board. After we left Japan, we went to Shanghai, and that was just before the communists came in and took over in that area, and we we uh, ended up in being in Shanghai for two months. We we were moored in the middle of the Wangpu River, and uh, during our time we were in there. The, the Chinese had uh, had captured uh, during World War II. They had captured the Japanese LST, and uh, the ship they were taking it out down the river, and uh, and then they brought it back in in the afternoon, and uh, whoever was the captain of the ship uh, misjudged. And uh, the uh, the tide was coming in and up the river, and uh, they they were instead of going up the one side of us, he he passed over in the front of our ship, and, and uh, the tide was strong enough it took the his ship and took us right into uh, the bow of our ship. And the, that Japanese LST almost split in half, My God. and fuel oil all over the place, and and all all we got out of it was a a little tear in the hull. There was a little t tear, and they had to go down and and uh, weld a, a piece of metal over that hole so, till we got back to the states, but. Uh, uh, if that had ship had been had sunk, we'd have probably been there another two months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't a four F that I couldn't participate in. I think well, there was a lot of fellows that uh, there was something wrong with their health that they couldn't couldn't get into the service, and uh, I, I think those guys would uh, feel. Uh, Kind of a let down on uh, being that all most of the young fellows were in the service at that time. Well, this is great, Paul. Thanks so much. I I appreciate you coming in.